What's up guys, it's USA Specialist, and Battlefield's newest map is fun, but also a total mess. and Russia are both being accused of fielding armed NOPATs in an escalating fight over vital resources. Now, 2042's devs have compared Haven to the likes of Amiens and Kharkiv, some of the greatest urban maps in Battlefield history, a sentiment that shows that the current team working on Battlefield has zero idea what they're talking about. While Amiens is perhaps the best three-lane map ever put in Battlefield and Kharkiv is a diverse cityscape, Haven is neither of those things. Haven is a mashup of Battlefield 3 structures, Bad Company's aesthetic, and 2042's freeform design. Essentially a mess of a map that reuses old assets that don't really work together, copy and pasted in a random order. While the map can still be a fun, high-speed sweat fest, between the constant head glitches, dark interiors, endless identical buildings, and unbalanced layout, Haven can be a fun map but it's far from a good map. Dude, what the f is that spawn? Same exact spawn, holy shit. Haven's real charm comes in creating a space where high-skilled players can duke it out, pouncing on lower-skilled opponents, abusing broken mechanics, and competing for kills in a map that doesn't reward objective focus. Haven is pretty from the outside, but the more you pay attention, and the more you can see how poorly designed, built, and balanced this map actually is. But guys, like always, hit subscribe, and let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Battlefield 2042's Season 7 map, Haven. Right off the bat, Haven is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but for others, this tight, sweaty, dense map will be one of their favorites, and I fall more into that category. Haven's best attribute in comparison to the rest of 2042's maps is that Haven has a higher pace, allowing more engagements, more kills, and quicker games. While this does have its drawbacks, Haven is in a constant flow of action, opportunities, and changing tides. It allows intelligent positioning, game sense, and skill to shine in moment-to-moment -moment gunfights, where players have a lot of windows always in elevation to take advantage of at a moment's notice. Oh my god. Something many of 2042's other maps don't feature. Maps like Hourglass don't offer the player anywhere near the amount of moment-to-moment -moment options like Haven, Stranded, or even Flashpoint. Thus, Haven feels like you have a decent sense of control when it comes to your positioning and avoiding threats like vehicles. Aside from the map's constant action and player agency, Haven also looks great as one of 2042's most detailed maps. Its colorful palette, detailed graffiti, and believable environment feel great and like a conflict we could experience today. Although there are some major issues I'll talk about in a moment, it's good to see that DICE is at least making their maps detailed when they decide to scale them down, and that the Frostbite engine can indeed still make an urban setting. Haven is perhaps the most lived-in feeling map out of the entire game's catalog, but aside from the map's detail, fast pace, and great sense of player agency, which I highly praise, there's only one other notable positive. That being, Haven allows a lot more player choice when it comes to gadget, weapon, and character selection. Haven features a lot more distance for ranged weapons than I first expected, and when combined with vehicles, a range of useful gadgets, and player strategies, Haven can be a rather dynamic map. I'm always swapping between specialists on this map, whether I want to drop a spawn beacon with Paik, grapple with McKay, or heal with Falk. 
If one strategy isn't working, there's always more options on the table. From snipers to shotguns, spawn beacons to stingers, Haven features a lot of player choice and that's refreshing after years of open fields and vehicle spam. Now, Haven's got several minor issues. First up, visibility, especially in some of the darker rooms, can be questionable at best. With such bright light outside, many of the buildings cast incredibly dark shadows both inside the rooms and outside in the hallways. I would have liked to see maybe more skylights in the ceilings or generators with lighting like we see in the dark corners of Redacted. However, DICE seemed pretty adamant to not create any new assets for this map, which brings me on to my next issue. Haven is almost entirely recycled assets which feel randomly thrown around the environment. Most buildings on this map are directly taken from Battlefield 3 and Bad Company, so much so that you can see them all featured on classic portal maps like Arika Harbor and Caspian Border. Now, while I understand DICE reusing assets, there's some real issues here. These were all modeled for a different game with different mechanics in a different era. Some aspects of these models, like the ladder hatches, don't fit the character models very well and feel really clunky during a fast-paced gunfight. And aside from that, this is supposed to be a AAA live service, and after several months of zero content, we come back to copy and pasted assets from over a decade ago. This reliance on recycled content really makes Haven feel stale and dated. And the fact this entire map is the same four or five models repeated causes the map to not have any notable points of interest or changes in strategy, like Shanghai's Tower or Operation Firestorm's oil rig. While I can appreciate a more down-to-earth environment, it becomes repetitive with a little personality for callouts. These issues right here might not be the most major, but I think will cause the season to die faster than the prior. Although the action is fun, Haven already feels stale, small, and basic. It doesn't have the personality or freshness to stand up to some of even 2042's own maps like Redacted. Now for the real issues, while being stale, recycled, and way overdue are bad, Haven has some downright terrible drawbacks which go back to what I said in the prior section. DICE bringing back decade-old assets and design philosophy into a new, faster-paced game has caused some real issues, first of which is head glitching. Now, head glitching isn't anything new, but Haven's obsession with chest-high walls is a huge oversight. Getting to a chest-high wall or shooting down from a balcony will almost always guarantee you win that fight, thus creating a meta where camping in balconies or behind vehicles is a player's main focus. With such a fast time to kill and so many nooks and crannies, this causes the map's other major issue, which is ratting or camping. Haven really punishes players for pushing objectives. With slow capture times on such a small map and so many lines of sight, pushing objectives, especially something like B, C, or D, is almost always a death sentence. This map's layout and structures don't work very well for the game's mechanics. The recycled assets are clunky, slow capture times punish aggressive squads, and chest-high walls and windows reward staying in the same position. DICE had a real opportunity to make a true three-lane urban map, but instead they created a mess of copy-pasted buildings that reward camping all the while helicopters shoot fish in a barrel. Haven, especially on game modes like Rush, is dynamic, sweaty, and at moments, fun but is shockingly repetitive, basic, and frustrating. After almost six months, DICE delivered their cheapest and smallest map yet, which feels like a far cry from what we received in Season 6. I might be having fun on Haven now, but I don't think the fans will be sticking around for much longer, because at its core, Haven is simply a bad map, trying to ride on the coattails of its ancestors like Amiens, Cien Crossing, Karkand, or even Rotterdam. But guys, drop your comments below and tell me how you'd rate Haven. For everything else, stay tuned and subscribe, and as always, thank you guys for watching.